because you cannot solve a multi... You're infinitely flexible then. It's not about being flexible, it's about an approach. It's about responsibility. If the region has, stands a chance for peace, and only an indifferent America or indifferent world communities between the motivation and the potential of the, of the region to create a new coalition for reconciliation, and America does not move because it is not appropriate, it's not politically, democratically correct, it's a wrong policy. Now, when President Obama ran and actually ignited the you hope You want him of to wave a stick at Israel. That's I'm what sorry? You, you want him to wave a stick not at Israel. Not to wave a carrot. Not to I don't wave know, a I carrot. I do not believe in stick and carrot. I believe in carrot and carrot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Abraham Berg, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Now let me call, please, on Alan Dershowitz to speak against the motion. First, thank you so much for inviting me to the best university in America. <laughs> uh, I, I'm an American. That's not a vote-winning clause. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm an American. I love my country, despite the fact that Michael Scheuer includes me among those disloyal Americans who constitute a fifth column. I have to tell you, my grandmother, who came over from Poland, and took the Pledge of Allegiance would be very, very disturbed at hearing those words used about somebody who loves his country as much as I do. I strongly support our new president and our new Secretary of State in their policy of engagement, engagement with our adversaries, with Iran, with Syria, with Hamas. In the face of this new policy of engagement with our enemies, there could be no worse time to get tough with our strongest ally in the Middle East to single out Israel as the one nation to get tough with. Getting tough with Israel will be perceived as weakening Israel's security. A weakened Israel would be more susceptible to attack by overconfident enemies. A weakened Israel would be less likely to offer peace to Syria and to the Palestinian Authority. Getting tough on Israel is more likely to produce bloodshed than to produce peace. Being tough for tough's sake has failed with our enemies it will surely backfire with our friends. Now, Michael Scheuer takes the view that we shouldn't be tough with Israel. We should ignore Israel. And Avram Berg takes the view we should offer carrots to Israel. I think they're on our side of the debate. America is a democracy. Its citizens overwhelmingly support Israel because they know that it, too, is a democracy that wants peace with security. Tough won't bring about peace. Smart will. I urge you to reject this simple-minded proposition. Alan Dershowitz, thank you very much indeed. You question whether these gentlemen should, are on the right side of the issue. Um, my question to you is whether you're on the right side. You, uh, let's take some of the issues where mm -hmm. you've disagreed mm -hmm. uh, strongly with Israel, right. like on, on settlements, for I instance, do. in Gaza and deep in the West Bank. Right. Why aren't you on the other side of the argument then pushing for the U.S. to get tougher on those settlements. Because Israel abandoned the Gaza based on its own And what about, the ones, in, what about the ones in the West Bank? And they offered to end all the settlements in the West Bank in exchange for peace in 2000, 2001. But they're not and offering that now. Well, they will offer it now. Will? Um, will yes, they? yes, in fact, they will know? offer it now. Because in, if Tory you Gold see... looks a little if curious you, about no, that. No, no. <laughs> if you ah. see the fact that uh, Barack joined the government and conditioned his joining the government on keeping this issue open. Israel doesn't need external pressure. It has all the internal pressure it needs to make peace. All it needs is a peace partner. But you put pressure on Israel when you feel like it. You've been critical, very critical of Israel. I put pressure on the United States. I put pressure on Great Britain. Yeah. But I so, wouldn't describe it. So what's the harm it. of the US putting pressure upon the settlements? That's not the point. You want to know who Israel should put pressure on and be tough with, and that is Hamas, Hezbollah, the Palestinian Authority. As soon as there is a partner for peace, there will be peace. When the Palestinian leadership want their own state, more than they want to see the end of the Jewish state, there will be a two-state solution. It's as simple as that. You, you vote on state, there will be a two-state solution. It's as simple as that. You, you've also been critical. You, you mentioned in your book the case for Israel that the Israeli state, to some extent, discriminates against Arabs. And it's changing. There was a commission with a justice of the Supreme Court. This was all internal. Nothing about the United States being But the being report tough. issued by the State Department in February this year talks about institutional, legal, and societal discrimination against Arabs, non-Orthodox Jews, and other religious groups. It says it's continued. And 
identify. This is your own government criticizing Israel. And I, so I join that criticism. As a non-Orthodox Jew, uh, I feel very much discriminated against. And that issue so worth was putting pending. Pressure? Worth putting pressure on them over that? By Israelis. The Arabs in Israel are treated better than Arabs anywhere in the world, but it must improve. It must get better. There are all kinds of groups within Israel pushing for that improvement. They don't need the United States to single out Israel to get tough. Remember, that's okay. what this resolution is. Should we be tough on Israel at a time when we're having dialogue with Iran, with Syria, and with Hamas? That would send absolute, absolutely, excuse me, the wrong message. Okay, Alan Dershowitz, thank you very thank much you. indeed. Sorry. Now I'm going to throw this open to the audience to take your questions. And there's a lady in the row there. Lady, you put your hand up first. My question is, what difference does it make whether the U.S. is tougher or not on Israel? Honestly, if Israel had its own interests and agenda, don't you think it would carry on with those interests, regardless of any U.S. involvement at all? As much as it might perceived every now and then that Israel is a standalone operation, it is not. It is part of a larger, uni as a larger universe. And, um, and the relationship between the United States of America and the states of Israel are crucial both to the psychological and the strategical positioning and state of mind of the country and the people and the decision makers. And therefore, it is very, very important the nature of the fabric of life between us and the administration. The one thing I would agree with you, where the United States should be tough on Israel, to reform its political system Let's vote. so as to <laughs> not allow small minorities, both on the left and the right, to have a megaphone effect. I wish they could borrow America's democracy, but they are a democracy. They are a okay. secular democracy. This is not a religious war. Michael Scheuer totally distorts the notion okay. of Israel as a religious society. The Iraq war fought by the United States may have been a religious war, but Israel's wars are wars so of self-defense. Okay, I'm going to move on to a gentleman who's got his hand up. You, yes, yeah. Hi, Tim. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, Mr. Gold, I'd like to pick up a little bit on, on something that Mr. Berg was referring to. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the motion, uh, the uh, new government of, uh, apparently being formed by Prime Minister-designate uh, Netanyahu, and you yourself, a member of the Likud party, not seem to be willing to commit to a uh, two-state solution, to the creation of a Palestinian state, which is the American uh, strategic goal uh, for Israel and, and the Palestinians, has been a de facto since 1990 and was codified under President Bush and has been continued uh, under President Obama. Now, if, if the Israeli government is at odds with fundamental American policy seeking to have a Palestinian state living in peace and security alongside Israel, and your government doesn't support that, doesn't agree with that, surely the United States must do what it can through both carrots and uh, in other inducements as well as pressure to move Israel to accept the American strategic goal. Wouldn't you agree with that? What I think Prime Minister Netanyahu is saying, and it's a complex argument, you have to understand we're a very small country, we have to defend ourselves. It's a complex argument, but he is saying that he doesn't want to deceive anybody. He's saying, I want them to have maximal powers, but I don't want to say Palestinian state and then start subtracting those powers at the negotiating table and say, well, wait a minute, you, you said Palestinian state. which powers they have? It's going to be in a negotiation. Sorry, but we have a fundamental all, position. Assuming you have it all. Okay, you control the diplomatic affairs, you control the Not all diplomatic you, you affairs. You have whatever you like, you have it all your way. Are you then, at this very moment that you have it all, ready to remove all the settlements from the West Bank? I personally, and I'm, spe personally. I'm speaking for myself, not for a government which hasn't yet been formed, and I certainly don't represent it today, I represented an Israeli government in the past. But I will say this, I have always been for territorial compromise in the West Bank in accordance with UN Security Council Resolution Is it all the, all the settlements? No, I will answer your question. 67 lines? No. But because the division even, of Jerusalem according to Clinton uh, understandings? No, no, but I'll explain no, to you. No, no, no. I'll, no. So why should the Palestinians yes, yes, come yes, forward? Yes, 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 I'll explain to you why. Because Israel Now I understand why you did not succeed in your negotiation. Let me, let me no. give you a, let me give I have you, to finish a sentence. Let me give you a yes, yes, yes. I have yes. to finish I a sentence. I, I, I have, have to finish. Which of you two would like let to speak Let me just finish my side. sentence. Israel has a right when it goes into negotiations to defend its interests, just as the Palestinians will defend their interests. Fine, now, we received, we received a letter, by the way, from the previous administration 
on uh, April uh, 14th, 2004, that was supported by massive bipartisan majorities in this country. That letter recognized that Israel is not going back to the pre-67 lands. It recognized there have been demographic changes since 1967 in the West Bank, and it would support a negotiation where our large settlement blocks would be retained by Israel. We'd have to find a quid pro quo for the Palestinians. Yeah. That is part of the negotiations. You don't go into a negotiation saying, that's it, I'm giving up everything just so I can get a good editorial yeah. in the New York let, Times. Let it doesn't personal. work that way. You, you will undercut personal. your vital interest, whether you're an American or an Israeli, if you negotiate that way. Let me give you some personal this testimony. Is, this is why you need American pressure. Okay, the current the government... Off, the off the table government, now, the, No, no, Long the current gone. government has said yesterday they accept the road map. The road map is the road to the two-state solution. That's true. And the two-state solution will That's occur a... if the Palestinians get their act together, create a government with Hamas and with the Palestinian Authority, and offer to accept the same deal that was given to them in 2000, 2001. Okay. I'm, I'm going to remind everybody of the motion that we're discussing tonight, right. which is that it's time for the that U.S. So administration good. to get tough on Israel. And I'm going to take a question from the lady uh, right there. You. Yes. Professor Dashowitz, what do you mean by getting smart? Isn't that just a fancy word for getting tough? Don't you think that the U.S. support for Israel is more hypocritical rather than principally driven because Jewish political and business lobbies contribute significantly and stopping support to Israel could possibly lead to a crumble in the U.S. administration? What's smart? is for the United States to take the position that it will never compromise on Israel's security. Yes, it will offer carrots, even sticks, I have no objection to that, about settlement policies, about discrimination, about any of those issues that don't involve Israeli security. That's smart. What's really not smart is using words like, let's get tough without discerning where the toughness occurs and where it doesn't occur. Saying you're gonna get tough simply weakens Israel in the mind of its enemies, particularly in the face of a policy that says, let's engage, let's get soft with Iran, let's get soft with Hamas, let's get soft with Syria, let's get right. tough okay. with Israel. Briefly. Absolutely let, let, the worst message. Let me bring message. Abraham Berg in briefly, Alan, but very briefly. But toughness will be much more sophisticated. Comes Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu to President Obama, first meeting, mm -hmm. tells him, President, you have one wish to make. He says, give me Iran. That's, that's the arch enemy. Says President Obama, you want Iran? For Iran, I have to settle Iraq. To settle Iraq, I need the Syrians. For Syrians, I need the Golan Heights. For the Golan Heights, I need the, the, the occupied territories. So it is not getting tougher, but it's an option, Mr. I Prime Minister. What do you have? What do you prefer? Agree okay. With okay. That so this is getting tougher. That's getting smart. No, it's smart and tougher, no, no. so it's about if vocabulary. It's not about talking. We cannot argue about that. It's like real the principle. Too. Excuse me. If you got enough to know what's going on, he's going to get tough. We've made the point. I'm going to take a question from the gentleman over there on the left, you send with the glasses. Yeah. I'm a Georgetown University student, Timothy Walton. Uh, the U.S. gives billions and billions of dollars every year in terms of foreign military assistance to Israel. However, in terms of the conventional and irregular coalition of forces, I think we can all honestly say that there's no existential threat to the Jewish state. Why doesn't the U.S. leverage those billions of dollars in military aid? Well, there is an existential threat to Israel from Iran. I think everybody acknowledges Iran announced. This is Rafs and Johnny saying, if we get a bomb, we'll drop it on Tel Aviv and kill 5 million Jews. They'll then drop a bomb on Tehran and kill 20 million Muslims. There are more of us than there are of them, so it will be a good trade-off. There are existential threats. The United States doesn't want Israel to attack Iran. And in order to get them not to attack Iran, they don't get tough. They give them anti-ballistic missiles, they give them defensive missiles, they give them ways of trying to prevent a nuclear attack. That's smart, that's not tough. You get to tough with Israel. Let me go yeah. back to the questioner here, he wants to say, let me go back to the questioner here, he wants to say something. The, the nuclear issue, please. Yeah. The nuclear issue is very important, I agree with that, but uh, I don't see a true correlation between U.S. military financing and Israeli success in being able to defend themselves from the nuclear issue. Israel already has that capa capability to a limited extent it's improving its anti-ballistic missile defense systems, but in terms of conventional forces, it doesn't improve. Let me answer the question. If American support for Israel, military support diminished, it would merely be an invitation to Israel's enemies to get adventurous 
and start attacking. Okay, That's Amber why Amber, it's a great I'm investment. Amber, Amber here. Historically, the money, is, the money is given because the money was given. And it's about time to reconsider the, the, the money allocation. Allocation of money for strategic threats and for real existential threats 